Oh man, okay. Well, this is the best it's gonna get. Welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, what's up? How's it going? And if you're coming back, what's up? How's it going? It's really good to see you again. I hope you're doing well. That's what happens when you subscribe. You get an extra greeting, so just do it already. All right, folks. Dating shows. You know, dating shows, when you date a show. I loved dating shows. I watched them all the time when I was a kid, even though I was way too young to be dating anybody and I didn't know what dating was or really how you do it, but I had cable TV and nothing else to do. And I've made a few videos in the past about dating shows from the early 2000s, like Keys to the VIP, Chains of Love. I think the reason I love dating shows from the early 2000s is because like that era was the golden age of bad television. And it was all MTV's fault. There was nobody else to blame. My good buddy Drew made a really funny video about the MTV show Ghosted a few weeks ago. And uh, that show right there is like a perfect example of MTV like still trying to hold on to their like early 2000s dating show success. I swear any premise that could possibly be turned into a dating show, MTV would make 30 seasons of it and I'd watch every episode. <laughs> Just some examples, you had parental control, where the contestants' parents try to find a new romantic partner for their child because they hate their child's current partner. What's another one? Date my mom, the show where a guy dates a mom. Time to date these mothers and find me a lover. That was a great one, really creative title too. There was also the show Mile High Club, where people would go skydiving together and they would have to decide whether or not they want to pursue a relationship with the other person by the time they reach the ground. All of these premises were insane, but I watched them every single week. And that Mile High Club show doesn't even exist. Fucking made it up. That's how easy it is to come up with these dating show ideas. But I miss all of these. There was one MTV show that was kind of Top dog. But real quick, do me a favor right now. Take a look around your room. Is it messy? Dirty, even? Do you have embarrassing, gross items kind of just everywhere because you've spent the last year of your life living in that same room because of a deadly virus? Yeah, probably. And that's fine. I don't care. I'm not your mom. No one's going to date me today. Time to date these mothers! But now, do me a favor. Imagine just a random person walking into your room, rummaging through all your shit, and sort of, sort of making fun of you in the process. And you have to watch them do this from another location. And also, it's broadcasted all across the country. And oh yeah, then you have to go on a date with the person that just rummaged through all your crap. Does that sound like a good idea? Well, MTV thought it did, because that is the exact premise of the early 2000s dating show, Room Raiders. The show ran from 2003 to 2009. The first episode was actually branded as Dorm Raiders and was hosted by the most 2003 couple of all time, Nicholas Shea and Jessica Simpson. This is Dorm Raiders. They ran from 2002 to 2006, so Room Raiders... Uh, lasted longer than their marriage. This is divorce. Room Raiders also had an episode starring the king, Zac Efron. That's right, a pre- High School Musical Zac Efron was on an episode of Room Raiders. How amazing is that? And the episode is just full of gems. I think I have troubles with dating because I just don't put out. Hip hop dancing is fun because I'm really good at shaking my ass. Michael Dorman. Oh! oh. I like your voice. You've got a pretty decent body. I'm a virgin. That's good. good. You got animal print. There's a conflict. See, my mom loves animal print. What? Yellow and red. Those are like actually some of my mom's favorite colors. T as in Troy? No, Gabriella. T as in therapy for my Oedipus complex. I'm just a virgin. I won't talk about that episode in this video because Fred already made a whole video about it, but my favorite part is when Zach is listing off his favorite part about all the contestants' room and he says this. So let me go over the things I liked in your room. Room number two, the pool was amazing. Yeah, my favorite part of your room was... Uh, your pool in your backyard. You're a fucking suck. But I found another great episode that we can watch together and see if Room Raiders holds up 15 years later. So without further ado, let's raid some rooms. <laughs> oh, right. Okay, sorry. I forgot to mention this. I guess this is a special edition of Room Raiders. It's Room Raiders California Gone Wild Beauty and the Geeks. Gone Wild? Man, everyone's titties are going to be out. Oh, so the yeah. show starts off with a little introduction to the girl who's going to be raiding the guy's rooms. Uh, her name is Sarah. My name is Sarah. So let's see what she's all about. I'm 22 years old and I'm a writer here at a magazine in San Diego. San Diego? Isn't that just a waffle you find on the beach? Not another piece. So I got HSM on the brain. Sorry, folks. I like to go to the beach as much as I can, lay out and catch some rays. Okay, Sarah seems really nice. She's uh, she's ambitious, she's driven, and she only really wants two things in a guy. 
and it, <laughs> and it's these two fingers. She wants these two fingers and a guy. Top two turn-ons are someone who is intelligent and the jawline is a huge thing for me. Honestly, dude, I can't even disagree with that. <laughs> I have neither of those things. Oh, well, it's not bad. I am a dumbass though. But straight up, if you can find a man who understands molecular structure and jaw structure, game over, dude. You better get down on one knee and suck him off. He's the perfect man. <laughs> All right, so we met the beauty. Now it's time we meet the geeks. Let's meet these friggin' dweebs. Geek number one, his name is Kenneth. He's a little goofy. He likes dancing and he also likes grass. Over the years, I've sort of accumulated a fascination with different types of grasses. Maybe a little, t well, not maybe. He likes grass too much. You know when someone's being horny? online and then people are like go aside touch some grass you know do not say that to kenneth you cannot say that to kenneth he's a grass man all right there's kenneth who do we got for geek number two my name is caleb i'm 19 and i'm a student at san diego state university i do a really good dinosaur impression it's what i'm most famous for and i do a pretty good napoleon dynamite impression can you guys give me some chapstick from mtv that'd be sweet <laughs> caleb is awesome uh here's my impression of caleb uh, good. It was a good impression. I like it. A fun date to go on for me would be Lord of the Rings because that's the best movie ever. Did he just say his ideal date was Lord of the Rings? A fun date to go on for me would be Lord of the Rings. He didn't even say watching Lord of the Rings. He said Lord of the Rings. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know how that would go, dude. Yo, what are you doing later? Maybe you can come over and we can, uh, Lord of the Rings. <laughs> like, watch Lord of the Rings? No, 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 no. Lord of the Rings. Okay, I'm not sure if I follow. Come on, you know, Fellowship, Two Towers, Return of the King. Yeah, yeah, I've seen the movies. Okay, perfect. So yeah, all of, all of that. Okay, whatever. How about, instead, we watch that movie based on the novel Push by Sapphire? What's it, uh, what's it called? All right, and for geek number three, we got Dane. He's a vegetarian skater boy. And I know what you're thinking, that's not typically geeky, but he wears glasses. So you know what that means. Born with poor vision, fucking loser. <laughs> also, dude, it is so 2005 to call someone a geek. Geek is the most 2005 insult next to like biatch or something. And I honestly feel bad for these guys. Imagine how shitty it was when they found out that they were gonna be on this episode. Oh, hello. Hello, is this, uh, is this Curtis? Yes, this is he. All right, just wanted to call and let you know that you've been selected huh? for the MTV show. Oh my God. Oh my God, that's amazing. And that's not all. This is Room Raiders, California, Gone Wild, Beauty and the Geek. Oh, <laughs> cool. That's, that's awesome. Yeah, we're really excited. So yeah, congratulations. Thanks. Yeah, thank you. Uh, hey, quick question. Yeah. Uh, am, am, am I the beauty or? What? No, oh, no, oh god, no. We picked a, a beautiful girl to be the beauty, you idiot. You're a geek. You're a fucking loser, man. You're the biggest geek I've ever seen. Look at yourself, yeah. man. You're disgusting. You're a mean. loser. How dare you say this to me? I don't care. All right, All right. you know I'm what? Not, Enough. I don't really Here, know if I want to do this. Some of this. Oh, what the hell? <laughs> yeah, you like that? Come what on. What the hell? How'd you give me a wet willy through the phone? Not important. Oh, Come here. You're coming wait, with wait. me, Curtis. You thought the wet willy was bad? It's gonna get a whole lot worse, buddy. You're getting a swirly. Yeah, you're getting the swirly, dude. <laughs> Back to the show. I did a little bit of research, and uh, to make sure that these geeks can't tidy up the room or hide any embarrassing things before Sarah comes over, MTV actually doesn't tell the contestants like what the show premise is. And then when it's the day to shoot the show, uh, the Room Raiders team just kind of shows up to their house in a big white van and essentially kidnaps them. The guys have no clue they are about to be abducted. Yeah, like most abductions. <laughs> To conceal their identity, all photos of them will be disguised. Caleb. <laughs> okay, so obviously the, the kidnapping scene is staged, you know, it's they're acting. Unless this is Caleb's genuine reaction to getting kidnapped. Caleb. But anyways, once they're in the white van, the geeks are super excited because they found out that they're on Room Raiders. You are on Room Raiders. And uh, they get pretty hyped when they see Sarah. Oh, did he do? Yeah. All right, now it's time for the actual rating of the rooms. First up is Kenneth. I have my handy spy kit here with me, so I hope you guys clean up. Oh yeah, also really quick, Sarah has a spy kit so she could spy around, I guess. So remember that. I hope he doesn't live with his mom. I like an independent man. I live with my mother, so she'll probably hate me now. Are you his little sister? Yes. Nice to meet you. <laughs> Will you show me his room? Yeah. 
Alright, let's go. That'd be awesome if your sister's head just spun around and she vomited all over everyone. That'd be awesome if your sister's head just spun around and she vomited all over everyone. That's a fucking weird thing to say. Why'd he say that? Alright, Caleb's a lunatic. Got it. Alright, Kenneth, let's see what's in the store. It looks clean. Clean's good. It looks like a rest home. Okay, this is gross. I think this looks like a retainer. Oh, I haven't washed that in four months. Wait, how often are you supposed to clean a retainer? Sorry, I was sort of I was sort of blessed by the teeth gods. I didn't need braces. I'm gonna look it up. How often do you need to wash your retainer? Oh my god. Holy shit. Every day? Oh, I haven't washed that in four months. Fucking four months? That's like using a handkerchief to wipe your ass every day, dude. That thing probably smells like a, a dead guy. That thing probably smells like a dead man. I'm gonna get out some gloves for my spy kit. This is just... Disgusting. Ooh. Oh, oh you smell she it. smells it. No! Why would she do that? Oh my god. Ooh. I'm gonna throw up. Caleb, wouldn't it be funny if my head spun around and I vomited on everybody? <laughs> Yo, Sarah, Sarah's low-key a freak though. Oh, is this a retainer? That's so, that's so gross. Oh, it smells so bad. That's, I can't believe, oh, I can't believe that. Ugh. Okay, so the show like is constantly like cutting back to the, the guys in the van reacting to Sarah going through all their stuff. And one of the most uncomfortable parts of this whole show is like how the guys interact with each other. Cause putting three fellas together who don't know each other in a very small space, who are also like competing with each other for a date with a girl, terrible idea. Especially if they're freaking geeks, right guys? <laughs> and it makes for some super uncomfortable situations. Fuck knock, you know what that means? No idea, I don't that wanna know. It means animal on your head. At least the animal on my head won't attack her. Why'd you keep that in there? That's so awkward. Caleb is so sad, dude. Look Aww. at him. <laughs> Man, fuck Kenneth. All my homies hate Kenneth. Kenneth was for sure the kid to take jokes like way too far for no reason. You all have that one friend, you're teasing them, you're like, hey man, your your shoes are ugly. And they're just like, well, at least my grandpa doesn't have dementia. And you're just like, bro. Hey Kenneth, I think I saw what I needed to see. Kenneth's room is all done. Sarah found a how to knit DVD that she really liked. I think it's cool. I like a guy who can be domestic as well. But she also found some video games that she doesn't like. She doesn't like video games. She's not an epic gamer. She doesn't like video games. Can you believe that? And she also found the retainer that she doesn't like we all know the truth or the tooth so now sarah's on her way to caleb's room to see if she can sniff some socks or whatever she's into all the houses kind of look alike i hope you don't look like every other guy because i like something a little different i definitely don't look like every other guy you're damn right you don't jesus man i'm really having a hard time not making this entire video about how much i hate kenneth one of my middle names is kenneth too i think that's why it hurts so much we're not all like this hashtag not all kenneths okay back to the episode this is probably my favorite part of the entire thing sarah's looking through caleb's room she finds belt buckles and a cowboy hat and is super stoked because she thinks cowboys are hot as fuck cowboys are really sexy so this is a major plus which is no surprise <laughs> but then she sees a bird claw on the wall oh like a claw of some sort. She's pretty sketched out by it, so she grabs a spy kit to get a closer look. A magnifying glass. Let's see. Ew. This is definitely a claw, so I think you've killed a real animal. I do. This is definitely a claw. I don't think the magnifying glass was necessary, Sarah. Necessary. Huh, this looks like a bird claw because it is a bird claw, but I can't be certain. Yep. Bird claw. Straight up, she would have got the same result if she just went like this. She didn't even have to ET that shit either. Just, <laughs> man, that is so funny to me. Like, what did she think was gonna happen? It wasn't gonna be a bird claw under the magnifying glass? Now, what would happen if I stabbed myself with a toothpick? Oh, I think I just gave myself a splinter. I can't be certain though. Wait, what the fuck? Me? Okay. Curtis, it's me. I'm you from the future, okay? I don't have much time. Listen, there's a reason Zoe Deschanel sings in every single movie and television show that she's in. If she stops singing, the world stops spinning, and life as we know it comes to an end. Curtis, you are humanity's last hope. 
Zoe Deschanel cannot stop singing, even if her life depends on it. At least it's not a bird claw. At least it's not a bird claw. We'll be right back after this YouTube video. Okay, so after Sarah realizes that it's in fact a bird claw, she gets immediately put off because she just assumes that Caleb killed this bird and is keeping the claw as a trophy. I mean, it wouldn't be a very good trophy if you have to use a magnifying glass to see it correctly, but I digress. I just got done searching room number two and I really like the cowboy hat and the belt buckles. It makes me think that he's a cowboy and cowboys are so sexy. And I didn't like the bird claw that I found. I thought that was kind of creepy and I hope he doesn't kill birds because I'm not into violence. Okay, so she said she likes cowboys but doesn't like boys who are violent. Uh... Do you know what cowboys are? Have you played Red Dead Redemption? Probably not. You don't like video games. Saying you like cowboys who aren't violent is like saying you're attracted to boys who collect Funko Pops and also use deodorant. Sorry to break it to you, Sarah. That boy does not exist. But I think that wall claw perfectly illustrates the main like issue with this show, I guess, which I guess makes it interesting. You know, it just like forces people to assume stuff because there's no context given or anything. And they're obviously not expecting a girl to be rummaging through their shit. And also, single guys' rooms are fucked. They're insane. They're like portals into another dimension, dude. Single guys' bedroom doors are basically nether portals from Minecraft. As soon as you walk in, everything just sort of feels off. There's things in there you don't usually see in the real world. It's dangerous, scary, and you only go in there to get what you need and get the fuck out as fast as possible. And I can say that because I used to live in a single guy's bedroom. It was mine. It was mine when I was a single guy. It was a weird way to say that. <laughs> okay, anyways, Sarah's all done with Caleb's room now. So now she's heading on to the final geek, Dane. It's going into the, the danger zone. Doesn't feel as like homey or residential. I'm just gonna realize I don't live with my mom right now. Uh, I'm sorry that you don't get home cooked meals every mm, night. I'm sorry I cook my own home cooked meal. Tell him, Dane. I gotta say this is a little weird because your room's not even in the house. So I don't know what this is all about. Uh, Whoa. Okay. Hey, I kind of feel like I'm in a cellar. All right. I know Sarah. She's trying her best. She's actually being like really sweet compared to the other uh, people I've seen on this show. But she said earlier that she didn't like how Kenneth lives with his mom or that Caleb's house looks like all the other houses on the block. I hope he doesn't live with his mom. I like an independent man. All the houses kind of look alike. But when she actually gets to someone's house where he lives, he has his own space. And it looks different from like typical suburban houses. She's just like, uh, I don't know about all this. Your room isn't even in the house. It's in the basement and that's not the house. And also it's so small. I need to pull up my magnifying glass to see this fucking room. Oh my goodness. What is this beast? That's the ugly jacket. The two most horrible fabrics are combined flannel and a jean vest. That jacket goes hard, dude. You can sell it on Depop for fucking $500 for sure. And have a dumb name like vintage fucking <laughs> vintage vintage grandpa fucking swag sweater original by this bitch now it's a little dust test oh no oh dane didn't your mother teach oh. you better yeah that's the dust is pretty gross but i feel like it could be way grosser you know like i know why they didn't do this but it's a really good thing the producers didn't put like one of those like blue light <laughs> things in the spy kit that like detects bodily fluids because whoa dude that would be a nightmare all right this is the best room yet he's got nice furniture really expensive clothes he's got a master's degree on the wall the place is spotless i think this is the perfect guy all right now i just got to use the blue light thing uh, i don't know it's a formality the producers want me to do it so all right uh hit the lights guys okay all right, this is looking pretty good. Everything is the same color. I'm not seeing any stains. This is awesome. Okay, I was right. This guy is perfect. I think me and him are gonna hit it. Sorry. <laughs> Guys, my, my hand is stuck to the couch. It seems to be a, a sticky substance on, on sort of everything in this room. I, how could this be? I didn't see any bodily fluids. Um, unless it's... It's all bodily fluid. My feet are stuck. Oh! Ew! 
All right, so there are all the boys' rooms. She likes some stuff. She hated some stuff. Into three crazy rooms, and I really have a tough decision to make. And you know what? So far, I'm gunning for Dane, you know, or Caleb, just as long as it's not Kenneth. I don't like Kenneth. But guys, <laughs> this next part... It's pretty epic. Now it's time for the geeks to get revenge. That's right, now they get to raid Sarah's room. Oh no! She wears them! These are the sticky ones! Oh my god. Army T, you be a movie of a man! Okay, for some reason this seems way creepier than Sarah going through all their stuff. I don't know what was going on in the early 2000s, but panty raids were kind of like just a thing that was just kind of accepted by everybody. Like there was even a Spongebob episode about going on a panty raid. Panty raid? Stealing chicks under pants. <laughs> Yo, dude, I went to Rebecca's last night for a house party. Snuck into her room, stole her underpants, rubbed them all over. <laughs> it was sick. Yeah, she probably farted in those and stuff. It's so hot. Yeah, it's super normal and not weird. Yeah. Yeah, my eye's kind of itchy, though, for some reason. This is bathing suit mania. What is this, man? It's padded crap. I don't like a girl that's trying to fake something. Oh, man. All right, Kenneth. <laughs> All right, man. I don't think you're in a position to be critiquing anybody. You are dressed like you're a backup trumpet player in a ska band. Okay, so while they're digging through all of Sarah's bikinis, uh, Sarah actually comes back, and now it's time for her to pick who she wants to go on a date with. One of the rooms, I found a lot of dirt. And as you can see, I like to live in a clean space. So room number three, I have to say goodbye. Pour one out for Dane, y'all. The only kind of normal guy there. <laughs> oh, Dane, it's so nice to meet you. It's all right, it's for the best. I might be a little dirty. Oh. <laughs> all right, guys, I only can pick one of you. I swear to God, if she sends Caleb home, I'm gonna go sicko mode. And you, and you will not like me when I go sicko mode. So in one room, I found a bird claw and it was kind of creepy and it makes me think that maybe it was a dead animal that one of you guys shot. So I'm gonna have to say goodbye to room number two. That's me. No fucking way, dude. No. Hi, Sarah, thank you. Actually, I found it on the ground. He said that so confidently. That's never a good explanation for anything, Caleb. Actually, I found it on the ground. So who's the idiot now? <laughs> All right, well, I found that you had a lot of like video games in your room. Mm -hmm. I don't really know too much about video games. I can definitely teach you. Well, good, because I, I have an old school Nintendo downstairs. Oh, original NES? Original NES. Do you want to play? Yeah, no doubt. She just said that she doesn't like video games. Seems like you still kind of into that video game thing, which I don't like. Sarah? What do you want? Idiot. All right, well, I guess that's fucking Room Raiders. Uh, Kenneth won for some reason, so now they go and spend quality time together. And dude, I want to give them the benefit of the doubt, but I just know for a fact that as soon as they, like, wrapped, Kenneth and Sarah never talked to each other ever again. I'm not saying Sarah is shallow by any means. I'm saying Kenneth is terrible. And I doubt any real long-time relationships like started on this show because whoa, what a god awful way to meet someone. <laughs> but unfortunately it does make for some like really entertaining television. And I did a little bit of research and for the most part, the rooms like weren't staged or anything or like they didn't plant anything to, you know, make things extra gross. So that's good. It was like as real as you could get in a reality show, which I feel like is pretty rare these days. But apparently when they kidnap the contestants and they're like watching the girl go through all their stuff in real time. It's not actually in real time. The rating happened the day before and they're just reacting to it, which, you know, makes sense logistically, but it still hurts a bit. We were lied to, we were punked. So MTV, I think I need to pursue legal action. All right, I hope you have a lawyer on retainer. That's like if I told you that I'm really a 66 year old man and I'm just editing together videos that I filmed 40 years ago. And that's, and that's just not true. I'm 26 years old currently in 2021. Exciting news here. Uh, today marks 20 years since actor Zoe Deschanel stopped singing, causing life as we knew it to come to an end. Later today, World President Jeff Bezos will meet with VP Joe Rogan to announce their plans to make everybody else in the world completely bald. But before that, let's take an ad break. This video is sponsored by HelloFresh. Folks, I've been eating HelloFresh every single week for the past two years, and I cannot recommend it enough. So let's talk about why HelloFresh is the number one meal kit in America and also the number one meal kit in our hearts. With HelloFresh, you get mouth-watering, seasonal recipes, and fresh 
pre-measured ingredients delivered right to your door. No more stressful meal planning and prepping. Just everything you need to prepare wholesome, delicious meals right at home. And I know it's tough to go out and like find new recipes and it's very easy to just keep making the same meals over and over again. But with HelloFresh, there are tons of unique, delicious recipes to choose from each week to help you break out of that recipe rut. And eating healthy can be tough as well. I know that. But HelloFresh offers tons of low-cal, carb-smart, vegetarian, and pescatarian options that are healthy and delicious. On top of getting delicious meals delivered to your door every week, HelloFresh is also devoted to saving you precious time. HelloFresh cuts out all the tedious parts of cooking so you can enjoy all the fun parts and get dinner on the table in just about 30 minutes or even 20 minutes with their quick and easy options. Dude, I could go all day. HelloFresh also helps you eat more sustainably. Their pre-portioned ingredients mean there's less prep for you and less wasted food. And HelloFresh's carbon footprint is 25% lower than that of meals made from store-bought groceries. But my favorite thing about HelloFresh is their flexibility. They make it incredibly easy to add a meal to your weekly order, change your delivery date, skip a week altogether, or add in delicious meal compliments like their best-selling garlic bread that we get like literally every week because it's so good. Oh my gosh, all of this can be done easily on the HelloFresh app. And guess what? The folks over at HelloFresh are hooking you guys up with a great deal. Just go to HelloFresh.com and use code CurtisTown12 for 12 free meals, including free shipping. So yeah, go give them a try. I promise you won't regret it. And it also helps me out a bunch when you check out the sponsors. So everybody wins here. All right, thank you so much to HelloFresh for sponsoring yet another one of my videos. Back to me. All right, well, thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, press the like button because one like equals one bird's claw leave a comment let me know what you thought of the video let me know if you want me to do more videos about uh early 2000s dating shows even though i'm going to press the subscribe button um because as soon as you do you become a valued citizen of curtis town if you didn't know curtis town is the best place to live in the world and i'm the mayor uh, so you have to be nice to me. It is the law. Hey, you can check the description for the other things I do. Weekly podcast called Very Really Good. My gaming channel, Curtis Pogger. I'm on Twitch every week, twice a week. Um, Instagram, Twitter, all that fun stuff. Also, thank you so much for 3 million subscribers. Uh, that's fucking insane. And I never thought that I would that would ever happen to me. It's still crazy that you guys are, you know, show so much support all the time for whatever I'm doing. And I truly Seriously, cannot thank you enough. I love what I do. I love that you like what I'm doing. And uh, yeah, it's a dream come true. So seriously, from the bottom of my heart and the hot bottom of my fart, thank you so much. All right, coming up next is at least it's not a bird claw. See ya. (laughs) 